every space we encounter is a potential service for art, and that includes ourselves as we make jewelry that expresses our identity as artists. So I am making these fabulous translucent earrings. I like really big earrings, but you could certainly make them smaller. So it all starts with a clear sheet of acetate. Now, believe it or not, my table at home is even messier than my table here. So what I do with this clear acetate so that I don't lose it is I actually glue it, or not glue it, but tape it to a file folder. Now you wanna make sure that you are using an acetate that is okay for wet media. Otherwise, it's just not gonna stick on there and we want it to stick. So I just take a tape loop and then put it down on my file folder and this way I don't lose it and I know what's happening. So now we're actually going to stamp but not in the traditional sense. We are going to stamp using a jelly plate. And these are wiggly plates. And they're made traditionally from gelatin, but this is a pre-made plate that's just made in the USA. Um, and it doesn't have any smell or odor or anything like that. And what you do is you put some paint directly onto the plate, and you really do not need that much. It's better to start with a teeny bit and then work your way up. Use your brayer to roll it out. Okay, and then we're just going to, and this is such a tiny amount and it's totally fine. We're just gonna start out just with that, a plain circle. If you don't want a circle, you can see you can use a triangle, you can use a square, they have shapes that are like hexagon, all kinds of stuff. Without even cleaning this, I might actually clean my brayer just off on the side of the file folder. I'm gonna switch colors. And this is where things are gonna get a little more interesting because we definitely want to layer some interesting ways. So I'm just going ahead, rolling across in two different directions. And again, you can clean your brayer or onto a scrap piece of paper or something like that. So again, if you just do a simple circle, this is what it looks like. Oh, and see, I didn't push down, but because I can see through it, I can get that area that I missed and you never even know the difference. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a stencil any stencil that you want, it doesn't have to be big or it can be a small stencil and with a dirty plate, because I like mixing directly on the plate, I'm gonna do yellow and pink, which are gonna make kind of an orange, at least that's my hope, is that they're gonna combine together to make an orange. Let's see if we can make that happen. And I just roll across and then I'm going to stamp right over that stencil and when I remove the stencil, boom, isn't that cool? It gives me a really neat pattern. So I can just keep going through. I like to use all the colors, <laughs> but if you're a person who likes a more restrained palette, go for it because jewelry is meant to express who you are as a person. Just remember, we're gonna be cutting all of this up so it doesn't really matter at all if it looks kind of like a mess when you're first doing it. But there you go. And now I actually have on this block the print of the stencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp a second time. And you can see that I've got a little bit of it there. I've got a lot of it here. I could probably, because acetate isn't absorbent, I could go one more time. So you can see you're using almost no paint to make these kind of magical prints. And I'm gonna go ahead now and add some white. I like to add white, because especially when you're doing clear stuff, white just adds another layer of dimension. So I have a dirty brayer, and we'll see if it contaminates or color mixes. There's two different ways of thinking of everything, right? A mistake is not a mistake, it's a creative opportunity, and having a little bit of dirty paint hit it, hit sitting around somewhere is totally okay. So I'm just gonna go over this again. But you can see, you just do not need a lot to make some really cool impressions. Now, once you do that, you can switch up your shape. So now we're gonna grab our next shape. I'm gonna take this triangle. It has two sheets of acetate on either side and you do wanna keep those because that is how you store the plate. And yes, I store my plates dirty, it's totally fine. So I'm gonna put the triangle down and it's the same process no matter what the shape is that you're using. Now of course I have stuck this to a stamp block. You could use a CD cover, you could use anything that it will cling to. I'm just gonna roll that out. Let's use a different stencil. So I'm going to go ahead, grab a different stencil, throw it down, and see what happens. Super cool. I love all that texture. And again, more texture 
on here. So once you've stamped out your whole sheet of acetate, then you should have something that looks like this. So what you wanna do then is you can keep going, obviously, you can add in more, you can just brayer over it to add more color, whatever it is that you want, but once it's totally full, you're gonna have a nice sheet. So what you're gonna do is you're going to cut it because we're actually gonna sandwich the paint on the inside of the acetate, but I have an extra way to add even more color. So you wanna take a water-soluble marker of some kind and just scribble anywhere that you want. You can scribble on both sides. You can scribble on one side. It doesn't matter. You're just trying to add a little bit of color in here that's basically gonna bleed and look like watercolor so that you get a really nice layered effect. So I'm just adding in all of my different color here. And you know, this paint is holding up to these water soluble markers because it's acrylic. And that's why we had to make sure that we used acrylic for this. And you can see already how different it is too now that it's cut up. Then take a liquid adhesive and you're going to run the liquid adhesive over the surface. I like to create a kind of snaky trail and then I'm just gonna get this cap in here. We're gonna sandwich the two together and you'll see that as the glue squeezes, see if you can see it right here and I push, there's this kind of watercolor effect. See how that spot of pink is getting bigger and bigger? Because essentially the glue is water or wetness that's activating those water soluble markers to create that really soft, ooh, look how soft that's getting that really cool watercolor effect behind here so that it really starts to have, take advantage of the acetate and look really translucent and cool. So I would let that dry, okay? So you wanna make sure to let it dry completely because we're gonna cut it. So I have one here that is already dry. Can you see that watercolor effect of the blue and the pink in there behind all that stamping and the acrylic? It looks really cool. So you can cut this with scissors. You can use an electronic die cutter. I'm actually gonna use a paper punch and I'm just gonna punch out my shape. Whoop, it's gonna go flying and I have it right here. So the next step is you wanna use, this is a jeweler's punch and all I'm gonna do is just cut a hole in the top I would then use jump ring and an earring hook and some pliers and you can see that shape right here in our finished pieces or if you like big earrings like I do, even longer. But it's an easy way to personalize art and wear it out. 